All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of What Remains of Edith Finch. As always, I'm Captain Beefy with the Game Vault, and we are learning about the history of the Finch family through all these various stories that young Edith Finch is finding around the house. So let's get to it and see what the next story is all about. This is a family that's history is steeped in tragedy and mystery. A lot of weirdness going on here. And trying to figure things out is... Not an easy feat, <laughs> I'll tell you that. We've had tragic deaths. Um, Look at the house. That history of imagination and stubbornness and madness. Any of it seems possible. Yeah, we've had deaths that were explainable, others that were inexplicable. Um, children dying, old people. Older men dying, you know. I think we've been surrounded by death for so long, we've just gotten used to it. What kind As of family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house? That's all very, very strange. It's quite a fascinating to story. This, but the pet cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one. Three of the gerbils are mine, and two had been my fault. This brings about a sadness that, yeah. Derpy, 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 burpy. Oh. Cats, rabbits, dogs. Oh, there's the goldfish, Christopher. Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. Wow. Twenty ten. She got her Hollywood star. Huh. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. My mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie the past never went away. She could see it poking out of the water at low tide. Yeah, from the first time I played the game, I knew that was going to play something into this story. Edie said she dreamed about the old house every night. There's Odin himself. Edie and Sven. Edie's side was always easier for me to understand. But the older I get, the more I can see where my mom was coming from. Milton doesn't have a death on his stone. She lost two of her brothers, just like I did. I get why she tried so hard to protect us. There's so many things I wish I could ask my mom now. Part of me thinks this is what she wanted all along. For me to come back someday and find everything out for myself. All right, well, let's get back to the house here. So this takes us back to Molly's story when the cat was chasing the bird. Little Looking table we jumped on, on before we caught her. If she told me there was going to be so much climbing, I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. Now there's a plot twist, huh? on the glass. I know this isn't that type of game that'll kill you, but still. And try that at I home, never kids. Met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. They were both pretty intense. Instead of hiding from death, Sam seemed to go out of his way to meet it. 
Sam was the soldier, Calvin's brother. Shot from Iwo Jima. Hmm. Now let's get Sam's story. Look at the ring there. Huh. Dawn, I promise you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are going to last a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Am I going to have to shoot anything? It's going to rain the whole weekend, isn't it? I will never forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. Okay, got it. <laughs> I'm going to take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. Hmm. Hey! <laughs> that's a keeper. Now that's funny. I should not have drunk all that coffee. I'm just saying, I'm not always going to be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff. If you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was going to be fine? Some guy who died. Don. Dad! Good eyes, Don. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of him. Dad, I... I... Just breathe. survive you'll need to be strong great shot Don oh what a crazy picture huh oh look at the poor thing I'm proud of you Don always remember that okay <laughs> There he goes. It's twitching. I think That's it's totally sick. normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about Dad! it. Dad! Oh, well, there's a picture. We know what happened to Sam now. Of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. Yeah, that's a sad thing right there, losing Grandpa like that, huh? Ugh. More secret passages. After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. Now comes one of the saddest stories. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. I think he saw things the rest of us don't. It makes you wonder, was his family magical in a way? I mean, it's just so weird. Watching over Gregory, it's time to... Hold on, sweetie. I told you I don't want to talk right now. Woohoo! Bubbles. I wonder what he saw. What his world was like. Huh. 
Oh, can't get that one. There we go. Lost in his imagination. Whatever it was, he saw. <laughs> so whimsical, right? Gregory becomes like Frog Boy. All the toys from the tub are here. Like Lego kids, don't they? Lego people. He want you to be happy too. Good luck, Kay. Love, Sam. Yeah, that's about as sad as it gets, little baby. my mom ever writing poetry and yet a poem for Gus who always said the wedding was a bad idea our father never hit us kids at least not very hard before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard huh Father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. I love the way you open up these stories with all these different ways. But though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom or the words that I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. The time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. <laughs> wow. The wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad was crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. 
what all my father said to this was make the music louder. That's right. Almost gives the uh, look of like a tornado, right? truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. That explains the fallen uh, totem pole on the beach. She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. Hmm. It's just so weird. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. I can't blame her on that. What a creepy way to At the live. Time, it was as far away as she could get. A bed between two dead boys, your brothers? Ugh. So it's still too close, but better than nothing. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. Hmm. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. And for a while, things were good. Almost normal, but it didn't last. It's so weird. It, this house reminds me of the Winchester house a little bit. Beginning they keep of the end building the onto it because it's cursed. When Edie gave him a castle. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. And little Milton. I guess now we learn his story. Finch in the magic paintbrush. I like the way this one's told. Like those old style cartoons, you know? Long before computer animation, this is the way the uh, cartoons are made for kids on TV. <laughs> it kind of. You know. Disconcerting, the boy painted a door and disappeared. I was four when Milton disappeared. Yeah. What did you do? Where did you go? It's so weird. This whole thing is so weird. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. It's the door he painted. Anyways. Oof. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. There's the house way out there again. Mom 
mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until mom got him a job at the cannery. Everyone was hoping to stay out of Lewis's room, except Lewis. Hmm. Big brother Lewis. Lewis had it cool, man, with his little boat up here. The boathouse, love it. Of course, Lewis was the consummate pothead. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died <laughs> a lot. Now this is one of the weirdest stories. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery, but he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to wander. I asked him to describe it. He said he started small, imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. This is so weird because you have to control both hands at the same time, and doing totally different things. Bats and toes. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. He took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. This thing is playing out like a video game in a way, like one of those old Ultima games or something like that. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss, but he said Lewis had become a model employee, methodical, tireless, focused. It's because he was living in I his own head. Knew Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. Huh. Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. The fish. He no longer spoke at the canopy. Barely keep track of as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. 
so he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. Pretty crazy because it plays out like a Conquest variety of different games push on. throughout history, you know? New Lewisville. St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis. Until Minneapolis. one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. <laughs> Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. Got lost in his own mind. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a... Now we get to choose branching paths. Handsome queen. Look at the writing. The queen was on her own quest for... Sinister serpents. Ooh. He followed the sound of her. Electric sitar. Chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. It's all written very much like those old fantasy type Even stories and games. His logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. Oh, we're getting backed up on fish. He was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. What is he now? For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. His story is very sad. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. Looks like we're back in the real world. Definitely Lewis's place. The world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. Yeah, this place must stink. Ugh. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Look at him, just so empty. I still thought I could save him. 
even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. Nobody has a face. Including the wise Calico who'd insisted on inviting him. <laughs> Molly the cat. Yeah, the callbacks are great to different parts of these stories. all part of the decor. Bend down his head. Here we go. That's what happened to Lewis. And the rest I think you know. Wow. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. Another disturbing story. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. Oof. Very disturbing. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I just wanted to get the hell out of there. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Well, now we get Edith's story. day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, <laughs> you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. Table's the same way we found it when we came back to the house. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay?
dear Eden, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what mm. happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. Creepy, huh? An earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I can only imagine. I've seen that house every day of my life. Never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. I got turned around. That's <laughs> so eerie. I keep expecting to find that monster that took Molly. For a while, I wandered. I started seeing things. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. Here we are. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Now we're at the house. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and... Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. Mile thrown in the back of the car. The next morning, the band came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After I wonder that, where she we went. went. A lot. She head back out to the old house. I wonder. We both tried to make the best of it. A few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> she got better for a while. And then she didn't. Hi, and then I was alone. Last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. Appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. Yeah. This journal was supposed to be for you, but now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you and tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. Oh. 
looks like childbirth, which is kind of interesting. I've never done that in a video this game. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. And there we have it. What remains of Edith Finch was her little journal. All those stories from her family that she was able to tell her at the time, unborn son. Tell me down below in the comments what you thought of this. I, I found this to be a fascinating story. Now, it asks a lot of questions. It doesn't answer a lot of those same questions, though. You know, like, obviously there was some kind of family curse, right? Some people died in ways that were seemingly natural, like the mother, you know, um, Walter hit by a train, Lewis by suicide. But then you have ones like Molly and Barbara who were consumed by monsters. Then you get the mysterious Milton who disappeared or Grandma Edie or Great Grandma Edie. It was Great Grandma, yeah, Great Grandma Edie who disappeared. We don't know what happened to these people. So... In any case, everyone was steeped in tragedy, and throughout the years, it's just such a, a weird story. I love it, personally. I think it's a fun game. Um, I thought it was so cool. You know, I'd heard about this game. I've had it on, God, I think, I don't remember if this is PlayStation, this is part of the Plus account that I was able to add it to my library a while back and never got around to it or if it's something that's part of the current package but in any case i'm glad i played it i like these kind of short games once in a while as you can see this was done in under two hours now i didn't go for the trophies in this it would have taken a little longer with the trophies and honestly the first playthrough probably took roughly three hours and a couple parts that were uh, a little challenging Oddly enough, on my first playthrough, I did better with catching rabbits. I caught them both on the first swoop. I had a much harder time with the shark catching the uh, seal, for instance. And, you know, I wandered around the house and I just marveled at um, the books and everything around the house and how weird and crazy it was. So I encourage you, if you do decide to play this game, to take some time and explore because there's so many little hidden things. And we're seeing so many of them right here. You know, like the mask right there that was in Barbara's story in the crutch. Um, the statue of Odin that we see. The the fallen over totem pole. All these crazy things. There's a little caterpillar. The rocket ship for Calvin. Look at that. Yeah, it's just also very touching overall. I love the fact that the developers and everyone involved here has pictures of themselves as kids instead of modern times which is endearing and creepy as well you know Oof. there's the peaches and we're in Walter's room now yeah so yeah definitely tell me what you think down below in the comments I'd love to hear your opinions of this does this look like the type of game you'd like to play and if you like this type of game I highly recommend Stray Stray follows a similar um kind of gameplay although you are a cat in that one and instead of exploring a house and all that you are exploring a city and you're trying to get home to your family but again it's not combat oriented it's exploration oriented you're discovering things finding out what happened in this world and it's pretty badass i definitely like it neil Druckmann's name in there trick-or-treat smell my feet and it goes back to the Chinese food from the very beginning now look at the family I guess there's the team now or in 2017 I guess when it was released so thank you very much Anna Pira thank you very much everyone for watching what remains of Edith Finch as always 
I'm Captain Beefy with the Game Vault. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel, ring that bell for notifications. I'll be doing these little spotlights once a month from now on for independent games, or we'll look at some of these shorter, different, off-the-beaten-track games that don't fall into that AAA category of super game that you see, uh, you know, with these big franchises and all that. A lot of these will be one-ofs and independent stories and stuff like that. And if you leave a like on the video down below, it's also appreciated. Until next time, peace.